I got a new wig, y'all, and it, it looks horrible. Ooh. Hey. <laughs> Hi. How are you, second man? Look, I was so glad I just took off my wig because I had the same hair, but it wasn't as curly. <laughs> Every, look, people are like, is that you? I'm like, no, I'm I know. not that I've fabulous. I've several of your pictures, and I'm like, yes, we definitely must have the same father, because you know my daddy was a Rolling <laughs> Stone, so I was like, we must have the same father. <laughs> I ain't going to comment on my daddy, but I ain't going to say it's not possible. <laughs> <laughs> I am so excited that you are in the queening activation with us. Um, first, let me tell you what it is. So to everyone that's going to be watching, people actually do watch the replay. They don't come in live. Like, I just want you to know. So we're going to still do it up like there's 100 people in here. Um, but the Queen Activation is a 21-day soul prompt for melanated women to experience the activation, the spiritual activation of their womb so they can manifest not only the lives that they desire, but actually the path they were designed and created to partake on. So um, we have thorough conversations on all ends of the healing spectrum. We have high touch, high level experts from wealth and finances and real estate all the way to sex, love, relationships, yoga, breathing, vegan eating, clean e uh, eating, mental health, all of that. And you, my dearest beloved spark of flame, yes! are here because, spark, spark, spark. because your energy is 101 times three. Four. Time and I just love you. Listen, you are just like a megaphone of life. <laughs> and I can't do you justice with an introduction. So please introduce yourself. And I want to again say hi to Coach Robin and to Leslie who just came in. And we're going to have a good time. And I'm sorry, y'all. Like, I literally just switched wigs, ran up the stairs, yes. and it's hot. I'm embarrassed, <laughs> but woo! I love it. Hello, hello, <laughs> Queen. Thank you again, Sekima L, for inviting me to be a part of this esteemed forum and to share my treasure box and open up my little treasures of bliss yes. that I'm really excited. My name is Nakisha Michelle, and I am known in media and the press as the plus size love doyen because mm -hmm. I own the only matchmaking company in the world, dating and matchmaking company in the world, that services plus size, the plus size woman, and now we're servicing the plus size man. Not only do I do that, Ooh. but I hold a brand called The Ready Woman, and The Ready Woman is, are those women who are wanting to master their life, which includes love. And in mastering your life, we're learning to take those bold moves. I've been doing this since 2013. I've been full time mm -hmm. in my business since 2016. And I am based in Atlanta, Georgia, but I am a Los Angeles girl to heart. So I'm always like, God, hurry up and let me do my work in Atlanta so I can get back to sunny Southern California. <laughs> Are you really from California? I'm actually from Ohio, but I lived in California for okay. a good part of my life before I moved. Well, I moved to Nigeria and then here to Atlanta from Nigeria. So the goal is to get back to Los Angeles. Is it? Yeah. I feel like Atlanta needs all of you. And before we get into the conversation, I just want to say that um, you hold a monthly, what would you call it? A, a ladies' hot night heavy, in? Hot, hot, hot and heavy. heavy. Hot and I got my whole life <laughs> at your last event. That was like sizzling, sizzling fire. Whoa, what is this? This is an adult situation. Yeah, yeah. So that's going to lead me to, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> can you please? Transparency because yes. we talked about it. And my sister friend, Shantae, who is the owner of Forbidden Kiss, um, she helped me open myself up even more as a plus size woman to the whole sexuality piece and it's just mm -hmm. beautiful it's just beautiful when you can she's just amazing. embrace all of you and she is just so like ugh, she just doesn't even care <laughs> she's right. like, I'm <laughs> literally <laughs> <laughs> okay so we're gonna be you're gonna lead us into our week of love um self-love self-appreciation and all of that so i first want to ask you what is sexy to you and how does a woman tap into her sexy? 
Well, sexiest to me is that adoration on the highest level of honoring everything that you are from the way your body looks to the way it moves and honoring it and feeling intrigued by it, not hidden, not mm -hmm. ashamed in any kind of way, no matter what your stretch marks are, no matter where <laughs> the extra cellulite is, but honoring it and just seeing it as a masterpiece. And I always say, like, the, having the ability to look in the mirror, but start naked and make love to yourself, just looking at yourself and being like, girl, you know you got it. The same way you would want to be adored by a partner, you have mm -hmm. to adore yourself and that's sexy because it's an alluring piece to opening up our sexual window. And how do we get there? So you know I'm very transparent. You know, <laughs> there's not a feminine thing ounce mitochondria nothing right even in my womb i am not a feminine woman it's just not there but the older i get like i want to be i want to feel some type of sexy so how do people like me get there well you know what what one of the things that we take for granted a lot of times is we'll work spiritually we'll work on our spirit there's multiple selves okay Mm -hmm. And multiple selves create the whole being. So a lot of us are operating on half full. If you think of a gas, um, your gas tank for your car, mm -hmm. uh, and you think of the gauge, there are people who keep their car on full, like my grandmother. There are people who are <laughs> quarter a tank. There are people on half mm -hmm. a tank. And there's people who keep themselves very close to empty. And they're like gambling, how far can I get on this empty? Right. So such as a woman, a woman's life in her soul, a lot of us are really operating at very, are very less than half of a tank. And so mm -hmm. when someone is not necessarily feminine, it's what you, it's, it's, it's a learned behavior. Some women are naturally like that. But for me, mm -hmm. it was a learned behavior because I was naturally wild and loud and tomboyish, the only girl out of all the guys. So I literally had to learn that. And one of the steps I always um, say to learning how to be feminine is make a decision that you want to be. Mm. And then not only making a decision that you want to be, but mm -hmm. looking at what will it do for you? Because sometimes when you've been living your life on autopilot, you can't imagine having to add something else or have to work at something else because your right. life is okay the way it is. So you have to figure right. out what are the pros for you. And for me, I didn't want to attract partners that were needy and didn't have anything. Because I realized mm -hmm. my masculine self, yes, it made me really smart. It made me a go-getter. It made me ambitious. But when it came to love relationships, it made me, quote, unquote, the masculine in the relationship. So not just the masculine in my mouth, but the masculine in my <laughs> roles, having to be the breadwinner and all of that stuff. And I didn't like that. So I was just like, mm -hmm. what is it that I need to do so that I'm not the masculine? I can just fall into my partner's chest and feel taken care of. And that was being the opposite of what he is. And that was mm -hmm. being feminine. So I had to make a decision that I wanted to be feminine. And then second, look at the pros. And the pros for me, again, you have to find why you want this. Is it just something that looks good? Or what, what will you get from it? And then the third mm -hmm. thing is, of course, hang around people who either <laughs> are feminine and watch their mannerisms, mm -hmm. watch how they talk, watch how they move. Um, and... When you say, how do I learn this? I have a program which is called Bliss. And in mm -hmm. my Bliss program, my activation of Bliss program, we teach it because it's not like a one, two, three formula and now you're feminine. It's going right. through, um, I almost want to say, rewiring your whole uh, existence as a woman, like rewiring the way you think and process. So normally, um, you know, when you get angry, you might feel like, like a knee-jerk reaction and you might be like, okay, wait a minute. But rewiring means you look at it instead of reacting, you're responding. Feminine women respond versus react. So it's mm -hmm. a behavior, it's mannerisms, it's characteristics, and a lot of times it's an energy. 
it's an energy and so right. you can even pray for it you know you pray for it and so your intuition so let me back up what bliss is bliss is mm -hmm. beauty love intuition sensuality and significance when you are in your full bliss which means you are completely filled with your bliss your beauty your love your intuition your sensuality, and your significance. There's a voice that whispers inside of you and says, don't do that, don't do that, mm -hmm. you know, or do more of that, do more of this. And when you're feeling feminine, you feel more beautiful as well. You feel really beautiful. Right. You don't have anybody tell you you're beautiful. You feel beautiful. See, that's the thing. Hi, Delita. So, okay, so I've always been a curvy woman, right? Mm -hmm. And, but I'm from, I'm what you would call from the hood, right? I'm from New okay. York. Like, I'm such a city girl. So even, I didn't really start to learn how to be slightly feminine until I started doing the runway thing. Uh -huh. But as soon as that was over, I went to being, you know, a whole hood. Mm, you know what I'm saying? So, like, sometimes I really still battle with that. And for me, it goes back to my identity. Because if I don't have a wig on, then, you know, my hair is really low, it's faded, and I'm like, I don't know who I'm attracting. I don't know which way to allow my feminine essence to flow, you know what I mean? And so different women have their own definition and identity of femininity, but getting to the core of how it is and who it is and how it's supposed to flow through you, what mm -hmm. do you think would be the one switch to just make you stand out in your own sexy? Really, it's, for me, it's uh, deliberate intentions. I deliberately okay. do it. You have to deliberately. Okay. It's like cutting on a light switch, cutting it on and off. If okay. that makes sense, it's deliberate. And, and also, you know how they say, um, what is the word? Uh, like you're, you act it until you become it. Oh, um, fake it till you make it. Fake it till you make it. You fake it <laughs> until you make it. And it's, okay. and it's literally, okay, so I'll give you an example. One of the exercises we have in my Bliss Activation Program is look at your alter ego. Look okay. at what celebrity women are you naturally attracted to, just naturally attracted to. For me, it was two. There okay. is um, Marilyn Monroe. And then there's mm -hmm. Janet Jackson. So okay. one of the things that I did learning how to step in my femininity is I would emulate them. I would just sit for hours, read, watch everything that I can find and just look at them and just soak them up. So a lot of times when we don't have a vision of it, and like I mm -hmm. said, you're not surrounding yourself with those types of women. And it doesn't matter mm -hmm. if you have a wig on or not. It doesn't matter how you dress. It's, a, it's really an energy that you portray. So I right. can be looking like Miss Seely, but I don't care. I'll still go to the grocery store <laughs> and still attract men and still get my groove on because mm -hmm. it's the energy. And that's what I also teach plus size women when they're trying to find love. Don't worry about the the body curves and all of that stuff it's the energy it's like a magnet a magnet will pull in so if you have the energy of it it'll just naturally pull period don't matter you can mm -hmm. shave your head doesn't matter it's the okay energy. but so by academic discipline right you're a social worker yes Is that correct Yes. Okay, so you understand the levels of cognitive dissonance when it comes to self-introspection and, you know, seeing yourself how the world sees you, right? So as a plus-size woman, how do you, and I'm, I'm asking for myself in addition to everyone else, how do you have that energy process itself outward of you? Because, you know, being in the house alone or just being by yourself, you're like, I got this. I'm cute. I'm fine. Da, da, da. And then you go out in the world. And then there's what, you know, there are other people's expectations of, oh, if you're going to be big and beautiful, well, then it needs to look like this and it needs to come like that. And so if it doesn't, then that can also damage the ego, the alter ego that you may have. So can mm -hmm. you speak to really cultivating that within your own personal time and like dragging it and slaying it into the real world? Right. So then that goes back to what I was saying is some people live off a half a tank of gas and, you mm -hmm. know, close to damn near E. 
when you are by yourself, most of the time, you're on a half a tank of glass or below. When you go out into the world, you have to be on a full tank of gas. How do you mm -hmm. get to a full tank of gas? Everything I'm going to answer, everything I'm going to always say, it comes from quality time with yourself. What does my quality time look like? It is mm -hmm. daily meditation, but I'm intentional about my meditation. I'm intentional about the questions I need to have answered. I am intentional about what I'm what I'm uh, what my mantras are. I'm intentional about what I'm meditating about. I'm intentional about what the what I'm looking at in terms of a vision in front of me. So it's like a prescription for your spirit. You got to figure mm. out what the right prescription is for your spirit to be on like full. That. How do you know when you get on full? Because you feel it. You feel invincible. You feel so amazing. And whatever. And then not only that, you find out who your personal identity is. You find out who she is and you fall in love with her. So when you go out in the world, you're not worried about the parade that's that you weren't called to march in. You're marching mm -hmm. to the tune of your own parade. And those types of people are bold women. They're bold, they're intentional, and they are visionaries and they're leaders. And you can learn to be like that, but you're not going to do most of the work in your head in terms of, mm -hmm. you know, trying to read everything. Most of this work comes from sitting your butt down and be quiet and feeding yourself what you need to have to feel invincible and sometimes some days i don't get up from my altar until i feel invincible wow. i don't just sit there just to say i did it okay i did my 10 minutes and i get up if there's no life changing something to happen if a tear ain't coming out of my eye if i don't feel filled up i don't get my butt up which means most of my day, so most people like business women and all of that stuff, they spend a lot of time marketing and sending out 90 emails and all that stuff. I do the inward work because when I do the mm -hmm. inward work, that sensuality, that energetic feminism pulls and magnetize my money to me, my opportunities to me. Every time I've been on TV, every time I've been in a magazine, being on the cover of a magazine, being nominated, I didn't nominate myself. I didn't go reaching out. I don't have a publicist. I pulled those opportunities to me because of mm. me sitting my ass down and doing that work, making sure my tank is on full. It's the same as in a relationship. We get excited to get in a relationship, but we get in a relationship half full or most of the time empty, and then they suck the rest of the empty out, and then we turn into something awful <laughs> because we're not right. operating at our best. So the yes. answer to that is it's quality quality time and knowing what the prescription is for you to feel mm -hmm. so amazing that when you go out in the world you don't even care about their parade because you got your own yes ma'am and I just want to remind everybody that we throw up crowns, the crown emoji, when we find something is resonating with us. And don't forget to heart it up for our guest. Oh, Nikisha was actually just on um, what HGTV, right? Yeah. As a feature life coach. Looking fabulous. Thank you. And sexy. Thank you. So, <laughs> so I really want to know now, okay, when it comes to doing this work and being on your altar, um, cause this probably is going to turn into some sex questions that I have. And if y'all have questions, she will answer them very thoroughly. Her bliss program. The next cycle starts on Sunday, May 10th. It's 21 days. It's very reasonable. I'm going to be in this cycle cause that's my birthday. Oh, so make sure y'all sign up. Yes. <laughs> yes. But, um, when it comes to loving yourself, the stretch marks, the cellulite, all of that, <sighs> let's talk about mirror work and being naked and those type of rituals and celebrating and honoring yourself in that divine aspect. Okay. The, How do you, you love all the fullness? Well, when you first do the mirror work, you're not going to love and it's okay mm -hmm. because you need to get out your anger, your hurt, your disappointment in yourself. So for a while, you're going to look in the mirror and not be able to say anything to yourself. You're going to hurt and you're going to cry. But what I always say, it's like a grieving process because you have to grieve away 
the discord that you have with yourself. But no, mm. as long as you're not accepting yourself fully, your breasts, your hips, your butts, your thighs, your toes, whatever, your eyes, your, your double chin, whatever it is, as long as you deny parts of yourself, you will never be able to have a full life. And you will never mm. be able to win the love of someone fully. So understand that. I can heart my own self or crown my own self on that. <laughs> <laughs> Amen. <laughs> when you deny part to yourself, you will be denied. You won't have mm -hmm. the full anything. When you keep asking yourself, how come I get halfway to some place and then I feel like I can't break through? Or how come I get things and then the bottom falls out? Or how comes my relationship always seem like they're going to start off right or he or she said they're going to do better and then they don't. It's because there's somewhere that you're in that mirror and you're denying parts of yourself. You're angry with some parts of yourself. And so mm -hmm. it starts there with being honest. And then what I always say is now it's time to write a love letter to yourself. Mm -hmm. When you write that love letter to yourself, and I always say, write it as if you were the person that you want to be wooing you. So mm -hmm. you write that love letter to yourself, and then you set the mood. You set the mood. Because in order to feel beautiful, you have to be in a beautiful environment. And I always yes. say it's better to be in your bedroom. And your bedroom is not for the kids and potato chips and the TV and doing work and all of that stuff. Everybody that works with me knows the bedroom is for two things. That's fucking and sleeping. And if you're not fucking or sleeping, get out of the bedroom and find somewhere else that you need to be doing those things in because the bedroom is not that place, okay? So, that was very raw. <laughs> <laughs> that's it. Your kids don't need to be up in there. All of that. Yeah. No, the bedroom is the love den. It is the self-love den. It is where you go as a goddess, as a queen. Mm. It's where you go to rejuvenate yourself. It's where you go to have to experience pleasure. And pleasure is the highest form of magnetism that gets you manifestations. So if you have potato chips in the bed and books in the bed and your work and your laptop and all of that stuff, ain't no pleasure going on in there. You're feeding your You said pleasure? Stuff. Yes. I'm sorry. Pleasure. pleasure is the highest form of... The What'd highest form... Pleasure is the highest form of feeling that gets you manifestations. Okay. It's okay. orgasmic. Your pleasure should be Ooh. orgasmic. So nothing orgasmic is going on in your bedroom. There's no life changes happening. I promise you. So and in you your said bedroom, that's operating in masculinity. Yeah, that you're operating deep. your masculine energy. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah. So um, what you want to do is you have that love letter. You are butt naked, naked and unashamed. Please say that. Naked and unashamed. I am naked, naked and, unashamed. and unashamed. Naked and unashamed. And you have to say that until you can feel it. So mm -hmm. then you just take your time. You get your love list of music playing, whatever music turns you on. You light those candles. You light the incense. I'm an incense girl. Light those good incense or candles or whatever you like. And then you just sit and you just look at yourself. And you just start to read that letter to yourself. And then the letter doesn't have to be long and drawn out. Because, you know, sometimes me, as women, we'll mm -hmm. write a thesis. It doesn't need to be that. Just a <laughs> nice paragraph. <laughs> and you just mm -hmm. read it. And you kind of learn to ad lib. You read it. And you just look at yourself. And you look at your eyes. The beautiful thing about this mirror work is as you're looking in your eyes, you're changing the dynamic of your soul. Mm. You're changing the openness of your soul. You're changing the subconscious mind. And you're changing your eyesight. And when I say in bliss, your beauty. Because beauty is, like you said, how the world sees you and how you see you. Mm -hmm. And so as you're reading and doing the mirror work and looking in your soul and saying those love letters, now you are bit by bit replacing the discord and the anger that you have toward yourself. And now you're feeling that tank up with love. And love so... answers everything. 
I just want to say that I love you so much because even though we've been Facebook friends for like three or four years, probably, and it wasn't until recently when you had the event this year that I came and I met you. And so I mean this in the most admirable, admirable way. Okay. <laughs> you are the most sexiest woman I have ever met, Nikisha. And let me tell you why. Like, okay, you know I was in the industry for a minute. So I've seen all different types of women, right? And first of all, you are, you know, shorter than what I thought you were. Uh -huh. right you know what i'm saying and your curves are real but you are the first person in my entire life where i can say your personality does not have me looking at your size like it makes me want to squeeze up on you more so the what you talk about the bliss program is did you apply that to yourself first or were you just naturally just always bubbly because you ooze sex appeal and i was like i want some of that I told you that. I was like, I really want that. I don't even know how to be, huh? <laughs> like, that's what you are. Like, you know what I mean? So you apply bliss and the elements of bliss, and then do you just naturally flow? Or is it, you know, are you still consciously thinking about it? Like, what should people expect? Doesn't she, Jay? Like, Jay said, <laughs> you, you sure do. Like, it's, um, it's levels. It's levels. Okay. So the bliss that I had eight years ago when I made my, met my husband is not the same bliss that I have today. So one of okay. the mistakes that we make as women is we say, well, I got self-esteem. I did the work. You don't did the work. You do the work. <laughs> you do it. It's constant. You do it constantly mm -hmm. because every level, every life change, you is something that's always going to knock you off your game. There's something that's always that you're going to be always achieving for or wanting. So you have to have the bliss to match the level of whatever it is that you desire to manifest. Mm -hmm. So the bliss that I learned back in 2012, I keep, as I do the work, the whispers come and teach me how to add more to it or how to simplify it or how to make it uh, even more dynamic. And so now mm -hmm. that I know that my ultimate goal is being in the industry full time and having my mm -hmm. own television show and all of that stuff, there's a certain level of bliss that that takes. And I'm glad that you said mm -hmm. that, um, that I just, you forget about my weight. And that's what I work mm -hmm. with my women on is the men, all, I've been married twice. And both of my husbands was like, I've never, ever looked at a big girl before, but you don't even right. notice it after like you a don't. while. That's the power of being in your bliss. They are attracted. And this is what I say. Bliss is an interchangeable word for heaven. Everybody wants to mm. go to heaven, whether you believe it exists or not. But just the thought of what we were told as kids, everybody wants to be heaven. So I mm. work hard to be heaven. Mm. And that's what bliss is. I, just, I don't even know what to say because I feel like, you know, like they're watching, but they don't know. Like I didn't know. Like I'm a witness. I'm an ambassador to a visual ambassador. Now, when I finish this program, I'm a like, <laughs> you know, <laughs> you will definitely be at a whole. I need you to whip me up. It's a, the, the program is the blueprint to how to constantly be full. So when you feel something is off or you know you want to achieve something, I even tell my ladies, I'm like, I'm back to I'm I'm back on the bliss program. I, it's time. Mm -hmm. I gotta do it again. So that you can keep filling yourself up and you have the skills and the tools to know how to do that. Um and That's especially awesome. especially when stuff is not going right and all of that stuff. I have my dark my my dark moments. But when I come mm -hmm. out of my dark moments I'm always even more brilliant because I got the skills and I know what I need to do to bounce back. Does, right. that, make Does that make sense? It makes absolute sense. And that's all. And again, is. if anybody <laughs> has questions, ask away. So, okay. G, so, you know, it was coming. Maker. Hey, G. Hey, G. Hi, G. Hey, Tanya. <laughs> I'm here. I need some shout outs. Hey. <laughs> so, I need to know. Okay, this is the most, you are a shorty shorty, right? But you are very flexible because, again, when we went and did the hot and heavy, I'm advocating for you all night, okay? You, we had a fun time, and I'm not going to tell you what happened, but Nikisha is very flexible. 
How did you become so comfortable with your body in a sexual way? <laughs> Cause like, you know, I'm like almost five eleven and I'm like, I can't do half of what you can do. My leg doesn't bend. It's well, I <laughs> across my ankles. That's about as sexy as I get. <laughs> <laughs> Again, everything that you want to master, you have to practice. Okay. So, well, a little backstory was I was a cheerleader and real active um, until I got to college. So that is part of that flexibility and a dancer, you know, so that's mm -hmm. part of that. So you just kind of like never really lose it. But mm -hmm. I, okay, I'm just going to be honest. I study stuff. I watch porn. I watch... <laughs> the dancer girls and I practice and then yoga helped me a lot as well. Yoga okay. helped me. And, um, I just, I, I like sex. So when you like something and you in love with it, you want to be a pro at it. Right. Do you so, like sex naked? Yes. Lights on, okay. lights off. Do you? In the middle of the street. I don't care. Yes. <laughs> I love my body. And I'm going to tell you something. When I learned to love my body even more, um, my husband, he, it was so crazy. This is when I realized people only mirror who you are. Mm -hmm. We, um, right before we had sex for the first time, I was like, you don't want to wait till the night and make it sexy. He said, no, I want to do it in the daytime. I want to see everything. And I was like, whoa. So literally, <laughs> You know, we taking off everything or whatever. And then he just took his hand and just rubbed it all over my body. He was like, I love all of this. And all he was doing was emulating what I was doing in the mirror. I love all of this. He was literally just a mirror. <sighs> you got to love all of it because somewhere someone said, all of this is wrong. It's nasty. It's not, mm -hmm. it's not desirable. But the mirror right. work and looking in your own eyes and sitting your ass at that altar every day. And you think mm -hmm. about this. Think about when you work to get a degree and stuff. When you work to get a degree, you're not going to let nobody jeopardize your, you know, your image, your anything when mm -hmm. it comes to what you worked hard for. So when you work hard for you, this is what I want women to understand. Stop working hard for jobs and bosses. Work hard for you. Work hard mm -hmm. for your soul. Work hard for your bliss. Work hard for your spirit, your beauty, your love, your sensuality, your significance. When you work hard for yourself, you're not going to let just anybody mess with it. Mm. And that's the epitome. Self-esteem has levels. Like I said, you can be on full, you can be on a half tank, or you can be riding on fumes. But when you work hard, when you're getting your butt up every day and get into that altar and you're not moving until you're, you feel full and you feel radiant, you're not, um, you're constantly investing and in, say getting in the bliss activation class and you are actually doing because a lot of times I'm going to tell you it's a challenge. That's why we call it a challenge. Most women give mm -hmm. up on themselves after five to seven days and it's 21 days, but by day seven, they give up on themselves because they're so used to focusing on kids and things and people and people and, and um, social media and work and they don't know how to just focus on themselves for 21 days. It's too hard. Mm -hmm. But when you work hard to focus on yourself and that bliss rises and you see how magnetic you become, you're not going to just let anybody, including yourself, talk to yourself like a fool. You're just not going to do mm. it. Preaching in here. <laughs> I don't know what to say. Like, you're talking to me. Like, <laughs> pass the collection plate. Um, wow. Okay, keep going. Well, I'm just going to say, I mean, because if you think about it, why do we stay in relationships that don't benefit us? Because we're not full. Mm -hmm. We're not full of ourselves. When you're full of yourself, you're just not. You're just not. Mm -hmm. I'll be out here playing. Me and my husband have an open relationship right now. So I'll be out here dating, and dating, mm -hmm. uh, they will last seven days, three days. I just ain't. Uh, you're not going to. No, 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 no. Right. You're gonna right. Yourself, and. 
you learn that, no, I work too hard to get to where I'm at. I'm not pulling you nowhere. We're not dragging. We're not fighting. We're not arguing. We're not doing none of that stuff. Mm. The way I work hard on me, I want you to come with the same thing. And when we start letting men just get over on us or just to have a man, that's where the problem comes. Or just to have a partner, that's where the problems come. And that is a reflection of where you are in your gauge, whether you're full, half empty, or ride on fumes. Yes. <laughs> it comes from the work. The hardest work you will ever do is the work of doing yourself. Yeah. If you can't make love to yourself, you can't masturbate. You can't none you can't do none of that. Don't forget it. Y'all know what kind of We'll talk about how healthy that is and how necessary it is because I will say before you answer though, like I've been telling people all week because we've been hitting into the subject like I'm making a full transition out of, you know, ministry. And I was one of those people that really was doing, practicing what I was preaching. So for me, I have a negative kind of stigma or guilt with expressing my sexuality. You know what I mean? And I'll be honest, like I just, I told you, like, I guess I'm kind of like bisexual. You know what I mean? Like I had an experience and I was like, oh, that's dope. But at the same time, <laughs> I still want to be desired by men. Mm -hmm. And you know what I mean? So just talk about how important self-love is in just expressing your sexual goddess, that mythological factor. Mm -hmm. I too came out of deep, I feel like I'm still like a liberal Christian, but I also use everything as tools for me. Um, okay. I, I, you know, I, I, I'm Buddhist, I chant, I'm Hindu, I'm whatever I feel like is going to help me today. Okay. okay. <laughs> and that's it. <laughs> and that's that. All right. So okay. in saying that, yes, they used to preach against I was one of those ones that was celibate for a thousand years. And then finally when I got a husband, I didn't even know what to do. And it still was a rotten relationship because I just did I didn't want to go to hell. So I married right. him, so I didn't go to hell and it was hell in the relationship, right? So I came from right. that same background. But what I learned this this go around, no one can treat you better than you can treat yourself. Mm -hmm. And self-pleasuring is or masturbation. I like to call it self-pleasuring. Self-pleasuring, mm -hmm. again, is a form of um open yourself up to that orgasmic manifestation where you're in bliss instant bliss okay mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. instant bliss when you don't know your own body it is difficult to be comfortable with somebody else mm -hmm. it's difficult you've got to know your own body you've got to self-pleasuring helps you bond it's a bonding act mm -hmm. it helps you bond with yourself a lot of us are so detached with ourselves. We might put on the makeup, get the cute little, uh, what do you call it, frontal and all of that kind of stuff mm -hmm. and dress ourselves up, but we're so detached. And I always tell my male clients, and I used to tell my husband the same thing, and he would come and say, say it to me. When a woman has a terrible attitude, she ain't being fucked. And it don't necessarily mean by a man or a partner, by herself. Because you yes. can masturbate and be in self-pleasure and still be angry and mad at the world. How does that work? Because when right. you have an orgasm, what happens? You feel good. So you're not feeling good enough. You're not sitting with yourself enough and you're not orgasming enough. And I don't have time to wait on nobody to help me feel good. I don't have time for that. Life is short. Right. <laughs> me every day so I don't have time for him I have to make sure I'm doing what I need to do to have a bond with myself because I mm. came in the world by myself I'm going to leave by myself so I got to get along with me and getting along mm. with me helps me treat you better right getting along with me helps me have better opportunities that I don't have to fight for getting along with me 
helps me be more juicier to you. Sometimes I have to tone it down because men say the same thing. They're like, you are so fucking sensual. So I have to tone it down sometimes. And I'm like, yep, I was tearing myself up last week. <laughs> <laughs> It must still okay, be on so me. It must, that energy it's must always still on be you. On me. It's yes, always the on glow, you. All of that is because I'll be over here in love with myself. You do. You flirt with yourself in the open. I, I just. Period. How? I don't. How? Period. So many men have pulled me over on the side of the street because I was looking at myself in the mirror. And they'd be like, pull over, pull over. If you ain't in love with yourself, how are you going to be in love with somebody else? You don't even right. know what that is. What is that experience? We are talking about we love somebody, we love somebody, we love somebody. You don't love somebody until you learn yourself. But at the degree you love yourself, it's, it's all that you can love somebody else. And that's why we're always fighting and fussing in relationships. Because everybody's tank is half empty. Or, mm. or riding on fumes. Because we're so busy, busy, busy. And I'm so grateful for COVID for the fact that it's slowing everything down and you have more time to yourself. Make it quality right. time. Make that bold move into spending quality time. Just because you are alone without a person doesn't mean you're spending quality time. How much time did you spend affirming yourself today? And when you got mm. done affirming yourself, did you believe it? That's the test. How much time did you spend masturbating or self-pleasuring? And when you got done, did you orgasm? Or was you fumbling and can't figure out what's what and getting frustrated and don't like it and ew, it's nasty and all of that stuff? <laughs> I'm telling you, the more uh. that you disown yourself, the more mm -hmm. that somebody else is going to have a problem of owning you and I don't care what kind of good woman you think you are you can be mm -hmm. a good woman by your own definition but the soul don't lie mm. the energy don't lie your life experiences don't lie because they're only going to reflect what it sees what is being told you are mm. a projection of your life so what you see if you ain't liking it if it ain't lining up it always goes back to you how well are you embracing yourself? And be honest, are you riding on fumes and expecting mm -hmm. everybody else to give 100%? Or are you giving your 100% when you get up? One of the things in my uh, quiet time that was just uh, spoken to me and Tanya is like, that's my favorite client. She is amazing. Mm -hmm. She's like a good friend. My clients turn into family and friends. And one of the things I was telling her is um, I was reading a scripture when Paul was saying, I got to discipline myself, lest when I preach to others, I myself become mm -hmm. a castaway. Mm -hmm. It's a constant thing that you have to um, not only preach to other people or try to be there for other people, but you got to be there for yourself. And that determines if everybody else is going to be there. The reason we can't trust anybody to be there because you can't trust yourself to be there for yourself. Why you got to hurt feelings on a Friday night? I'm just saying. I'm just saying. I've Whoa. learned all of this the hard way. This stuff ain't wow. easy. I don't be wanting to get out of bed every morning or before I get ready to do something, I have to sit over there for hours and just sit. And I, I even have mm -hmm. the uh, hourglass. Sometimes I have mm -hmm. to turn the hourglass three times before I can get my break. <laughs> <Right. laughs> That's real. <laughs> I look at it and I have to turn it over again. Turn it over again. And then sometimes I only have to turn it over once, you know? It just mm -hmm. depends, but you don't want to get up until change has happened. Mm -hmm. Whatever you're working on, you have to be deliberate and intentional. You can't work on everything at one time. Mm. Because that'll cause anxiety. Right. So a lot of times when women join the 21 day challenge, they get anxiety because we are working on all three levels. We're working on your body. We're working on your spirit. We're working on your emotions at one time. And that's a lot to handle, but it mm -hmm. creates an instant change you're magnetic 
women have gotten men and, and manifested money and trips and gifts and all kind of stuff after that experience. Wow. So I'm curious to know when you, I don't know how matchmaking works. Mm -hmm. Again, you are a high level expert. I call you a passion coach. I know that's not your title title, but to me, that's what you are. I just want them to know. I just, I make up names for you because you're just everything. When you are, (laughs) I guess, profiling or acquiring, recruiting a male client, what would you say is like his number one turn off when it comes to the self-esteem or projection of self with a woman they well he's na- looking for this he's looking for that he's like uh-uh naturally mm-hmm. the first thing they're looking for is how happy you are okay um and they don't want to be interviewed mm. you know um i had to teach several clients like you don't come to a date and interviewing, like asking a bunch of questions, stop. So now we create dates for our clients. Whatever we feel like is their weakness, we try to find a date that will open up the opposite. So if you're real serious and intense, then we try to create something that's fun and exciting so you don't have time to be acting like you're um, interviewing someone and you're, go- you're, re- you're getting ready for a business negotiation deal. Like, right. no, why are you doing that? They want to see you happy feeling good playful um just enjoying life a turn off is you have a funky ass attitude mm-hmm. period that's one of their biggest turn off they can deal with a lot but they don't like women who are heavy who have like heaviness with them and or and they can pick up you know women who don't have the confidence because again most of the time women who don't have the confidence and who haven't worked on themselves they always show up in a certain way they have an energy of discontent Mm. and they don't like that another thing is they don't like when you put yourself down because sometimes we'll put ourselves down you know they may say oh you look so beautiful and you can't receive a compliment you'd be like are you sure really Mm -hmm. you could say oh thank you i thought so too i thought you put this dress on right yeah, when I okay. put this on, I was thinking of you. You sure you like all of this? You, yeah, I throw that flirt. <laughs> Find a way I'm a to bad flirt. flirt. I'm a bad a flirt. Find a way. I really need to take this course. Find a Seriously. way. I always say, find a way. Any opportunity. I don't care what it is. I will come straight in the door with something mm-hmm. sensual or sexual or funny sensual sexy or funny yes okay. the opposite of what you think because we think because men we know that men when they naturally if they like you they want to have sex or most mm-hmm. people i mean i'll do too when i see i'm like oh i want to eat like or i wonder you know you that's natural because we're 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 animals you know we're animals, right like animalistic well, that's natural we know that so we think if we try not to say anything like that or we're being too forward or we, we're giving him the wrong impression, you don't have to give him the wrong impression. They're already wondering how to get you in the bed. That's, you, all you're doing is showing that you are comfortable with yourself and you're comfortable mm. with your sexuality. But when you try to shun it and be like, oh, upset because they said something, uh-uh, you don't have a relationship with yourself. Nothing should break your confidence. Mm. Nothing they say should break your confidence. And when they start talking like that, I was like, yeah, I bet it would be good as soon as you earn it. <laughs> with a smile. Oh. As soon as you earn it. Miss Janet says, I tell men women want sex more than them. We just waiting for the right opportunity. I think I agree with that. Do you agree with that? I, I totally agree. I'll be yeah. able to jump they bones the same day if I'm interested. <laughs> but I know what was between my legs is powerful and I know what it's supposed to be for. So, and as a queen, I just, you know, try not to do that kind of things, but. But yeah. you can be a queen and still be like 
listen, this is the have a thought garden. moment, can't you? You can listen. have a moment, but this is a secret garden. And in the secret yeah. garden is that temple. And everybody can't have access to that temple because that no, temple they cannot. is for stuff, for some very powerful stuff. I'm intentional right. with everything now. Everything. Right. Everything. It doesn't mean it's bad or, or good or anything. There's no mm -hmm. judgment. It's for me. My temple mm -hmm. is for a real worshiper. Mm. I have guidelines and those guidelines need to be met. And so when those guidelines are met, then he can come in. But until then, no. I'm I just don't see how much take time care we myself. have. Okay, we probably got like five minutes, four minutes left before the thing shuts okay. off.